two Andrew Shook, Shook Pac-Man. He was one of my original partners in crime ten years ago. Um, now I'm going to have to check in with Simon Lee. Simon? It was Andrew that came up with the name, right? The Lion Rock Institute. You guys, no, you came up with the name. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Simon gets credit for the name. Oh, wait, the legal friend, Simon gets credit for the name. Ladies and gentlemen, all Simon. Good thing you're in the room, otherwise I think he would have jumped on it. Definitely wasn't me. So, 10 years ago, when we got this whole thing rolling, the first connection was uh, from, through a friend who connected me to Andrew Shun. Uh, within the Think Tank, we have nicknames for each other. And Andrew Shun, we refer to as the Mad Professor. He is an eclectic intellect, always entertaining, and he has put together a little something special for the people here tonight. So without any further ado, uh, co-founder and director of the Lion Rock Institute, Mr. Andrew Shun Pac-Man. Thank you. Um, uh, before, before I go into uh, what the Lion Rock Institute is all about, I want to first, especially because we have so many foreign guests with us today, uh, there is one defining characteristic that runs through everyone in Hong Kong. No matter which race, no matter what your political leaning, no matter whether you are a blue ribbon or a yellow ribbon, that particular characteristic was told to me by my, I, I, I used to host a radio show, and by my co-host, Michelle Rowe over there. Michelle, please sit about. And this particular characteristic is the relentless pursuit of efficiency. Hong Kong might not do things the best way. We might not, we might not make the best product or the best services. But <coughs> by God, we do it with the most efficiency possible. Because every time a small child, a small child was to line up at a ATM machine at a bank, the mother would teach this child to line up at a different machine. <laughs> to make sure that they reach the ATM machine at the quickest way possible. So this particular ethos has been drilled into us since a very young age. But uh, Andrew told me to talk about the last 10 years. And the last 10 years has its ups and downs. Uh, I'll start with the down. I personally became a full-blown alcoholic. Uh, and part of the reason was because of the public policy uh, problems in Hong Kong. And uh, before we go any further, although I cannot drink, please, as a stand-up comedian once said, uh, the amount of laughter you get is not because of how good your jokes are, but because of how drunk your audience is. <laughs> so please listen to us and have a drink right now. Alright, it was 10 years ago. I remember, I remember uh, Andrew uh, suddenly called, calling me and said, one of our mutual friends, his name is Stuart Hawkins, he was my secondary school friend, said, uh, Andrew uh, wanted to create a free market think tank. And uh, uh, he called me up and said, well, I was interested. I was like, yes. But within the, thir the first 30 seconds, I told him, if we are going to do this, there is one other person I have to call. I immediately called Simon Lee over there. So if you are to classify us, I am not, Andrew Webb is the entrepreneur. He was the driving force in actually starting the Lion Rock Institute. I think he personally wrote into our founding charter that we cannot take any government money. And we have remained one of the very few uh, organizations in Hong Kong that do not take uh, uh, government money. So thank you. Simon Lee, I, I, I have to spend some time with Simon Lee is uh, the intellectual dynamo of the Lion Rock Institute. Um, there is just no way that you can underplay it. Um, he had, he had, Deng, Deng Xiaoping's highest ever official rank was the chairman of the Chinese Bridge Association. <laughs> Similarly, Simon's uh, 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 title was the uh, Lion Rock Institute's chief librarian. 
which we flatter ourselves because we only have a bookshelf. <laughs> but so silently wants, and I would say that in many ways still is the intellectual dynamo that drives not only the Blind Rock Institute, but the free market movement itself. And uh, of course, I'm a free camera, so I'm going to talk about Bill Stacy. I have dug into the archives and oh, the projectors. Are they on? Uh, projectors, please. Well, back in the uh, back in the very early days, uh, we were a much younger and uh, the projector thumbed up. And even convinced 
someone called Anson Chan as to what Keith and Tank is. Because Anson Chan had no idea. <laughs> is it is an inside Hong Kong joke? Anyways, by design, we are supposed to move something called the window of policy possibility. On the spectrum of policy possibilities, say in education, on the one end, everything can be controlled. No private tutors allowed. You can't even escape the system. On the other end, the government doesn't even have the Department of Education. When a government official walks past a school, all he or she sees in his official capacity is a building full of young people and several older people that stands in front of them and yells at them. But on that very long spectrum, there is one window in which the people finds acceptable. And by design, a think tank had to be outside this particular window, outside of it, and advocate a certain position in which you move this window all the way to your side. And that's why a lot of, my, a lot of people ask us, why does the Landlock Institute talk to politicians? Because politicians are very simple. Once the people want something, they would themselves demand it. So it is the people that want to convince. The best example is an idea called privatization. Privatization was came up with, I, some, I'm sure some of the older folks here might be correcting me. But there is a think tank in London called the Institute of Economic Affairs. They came up with this idea in the 50s and 60s. And it took them until Margaret Thatcher in the 1980s before they could actually implement privatization full scale and became a mainstream thought all around the world. And it's been 10 years now for the Landmark Institute. I don't know how many years it will take us to go mainstream some of our ideas. But hopefully it will take it will be, it will be sooner because we are the freest economy in the world. So if you ever find the Landmark Institute being extreme or in Cantonese or gay, it is by design it is because we have to move the window of policy possibility. And over the years, there are many things that we have fought. I'll start off with the good stuff, the things that we have won. We have we spent a lot of effort in defeating a sales tax in Hong Kong. We have been one of the staunchest supporters of privatization in Hong Kong. And in fact, uh, the link read which so graciously sponsored the table tonight, uh, if it wasn't for the government that sold, that liberalized, free up this 10% of retail space in Hong Kong, imagine what rent would be today with all these Chinese tourists coming to Hong Kong. There are things in, oh, of course, the privatization. Uh, the airport will be trying to build a third runway. And it will be the Lion Rock Institute's position that we would only support the airport authority in building this particular runway if they can find private financing. If they cannot find private financing, that means the rich people of Hong Kong and around the world, the capital owners, don't think it's worth the, uh, the, uh, the, the bill. But there are also things in which we've lost. Uh, Financial Secretary John Chang said that uh, minimum wage, minimum wage would work. Um, and in fact, it was the passage of the minimum wage that finally led to the camel of the, the, the camel back breaking for me and my final descent into the rock bottom. Um, we tried our mighty best in meeting competition law. Uh, Simon Lee led the fight and he was the chief general. He knew the legislative process and we tried to delay it uh, until we could kick into the long grass. But uh, Greg So. Uh, beat us to it, and he passed the competition law. And the competition law is so poorly written that even before its implementation, they have, the competition, of, uh, competition authority has to present another bill to the Legislative Council uh, to strengthen and clarify their position. We have also spent a lot and a lot of effort in defeating something called the MPF, the Mandatory Provident Fund. Because we believe that it is the people with capital in their own pockets that can build the best retirement for themselves. Uh, we're fighting the uh, Securities and Futures Commission because we believe that what they see, what they see as chaos, is the best engine of growth. Um, there is a lot of other issues coming up, like maximum working hours. So uh, the fight. Actually
actually continues. But uh, you would ask, what, how, how do we actually do our advocacy? How do we actually move the window policy possibility? This is some clips, because we actually had an intern one year that knew how to edit film. <laughs> so uh, there was like one 12 months period in which we kept a lot of videos. So I dug into that archive and I found several videos of the past 10 years. Oh, this part of this will be in Cantonese, so I myself added the subtitles. Uh, hey, yes. But, so, listen. Limo 我都很難顧得到每一個人的動機 因為今時今日政府反而就要打擊我們一般的少年民<笑> 因為他們口碑被人定睛查查的封住了他都是走投無路才走到地產經濟政府的朋友是沒有人為他們說的這個這個是這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這
give a round of applause for Kenny. Kenny Wong. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to share my thoughts with you tonight, however short. I believe we're all gathered here to celebrate and embrace the entrepreneurial spirit in what is now the most prosperous and thriving city, which beats for Asia and the world economically, politically, and socially. Since the end of the touch base policy in the 1980s, however, which attracted the most tactful, cunning, and determined individuals, including Lee Ka-shing and Jimmy Lai. Hong Kong has retracted, looked more to Western policy strategies, and turned, unfortunately, more interventionist. My sociological studies with the London School of Economics has taught me theories and many, many hypothetical policy scenarios. But there's an emptiness to it, and unaware of the actual workings of these ideas, I've maintained a very neutral stance. The question remains, who is going to do anything about all these speculations? Till this year, I was hesitant to express my views on policy, avoided political discussions, and preferred to take the back seat to social, to social issues. I found my way to the Lion Rock Institute summer 2013 with a desire to know what happens in a think tank, a factory of ideas. I followed my gut. What came was a surprise. A year of intense shift in perspectives, gaining insight into the workings behind social and policy issues, and most importantly, a readiness to speak up finally as a libertarian at heart. LIROC provided me the opportunities to witness policy debates around the world, from Asia to the West, to meet influential leaders, uh, many of them who are sitting here today, and to propose solutions to maintain a free Hong Kong. Joining Lion Rock strengthened my appreciation for the core entrepreneurial spirit that had embodied this city beginning since its occupation, in which free-spirited minds trusted human cooperation and were very comfortable with interdependence. I now realize the price of losing our liberty, possibly, and if one listens to the Marxist ideologies spoken in, the, in private at, by the occupants sitting in the tents tonight in Admiralty, this danger is only reaffirmed. Most individuals have very strong opinions about social issues, whether it be ISIS or Occupy Central. Yet I remain one of few among my peers to take a strong interest in assisting in devising solutions that keep liberty alive in Hong Kong and the world. Preserving liberty is not just a one-man job. It requires teamwork among individuals who share common goals, regardless of their fields of occupation, and who embark on this lifelong journey together. We are in dire need to revive this innovative spirit and to raise a new generation of freedom fighters to lead Hong Kong. I here now leave you a quote by Adam Smith. The real tragedy of the poor is the poverty of their aspirations. My dream is to see others with the same calling to follow their hearts and minds, to undergo the same transformation that I have, and to live a life fulfilled and with legacies. And this can be done with the valuable opportunities that Lion Rock offers. And they can only get there with your generous help. Thank you. All right, uh, so we have one from London School Economics. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to introduce my next uh, intern, uh, Lewis. Right, Lewis. Round of applause, Lewis. I plan to say what is a think tank, but thanks for Mr. Shinho. I now don't have to say. Let's, let's just say it. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Lewis. I'm a typical Hong Kong student. You can tell by my accent. <laughs> I enter a local school. I took public examinations to get into university. It's the outcome of local schooling had always been turning students into stuffed ducks. Then, I'm definitely a stuffed duck. A through to through stuffed duck before joining Lion Rock Institute. <laughs> the first connection between me and Lion Rock Institute was through an email. I was submitting an essay for the essay competition. 
held by Lion Rock. To be honest, I have no idea what a think tank is before joining Lion Rock Institute. And thanks for Mr. Xu explaining us what is a think tank. For whatever reason, I won the essay competition and acquired an internship opportunity in Michigan. But guess what? I spent a whole summer overflowing what I've learned in my whole life. Catalyst is a tool to make others interest your own interests. In order to make money, you have to satisfy customers' needs. Before joining Lime Rock Institute, I too, as a typical stuff that, I think that capitalism is an unjust system which favors the capitalist. But the truth is, without capitalism, there will be a no just way to distribute wealth. If you want, if you want the government to distribute wealth in a just way, take this advice, go to North Korea. <laughs> then you can see how just a society will be. Capitalism do not guarantee initial endowment. But it provides another important thing, which is a ladder. A ladder for us to climb upward, which was also the core value of Hong Kong people. If you have lived in America, you know how free Hong Kong is. Like earlier mentioned by Andrew Ward, we don't have the civil forfeiture of access. Police don't have the right to seize your assets based on suspicion. We, we can start, a, start our own business only by spending a couple thousand of dollars. Not to mention, you don't have to be 21 to order a beer in Hong Kong. <laughs> How can we let such a lovely place fall into the head of a big government? Everyone have a chance to change their life. To me, Johnny Lime Rock Institute is my life changer. They give me a chance to learn outside of Spoon feeding schooling system. They give me a chance to see how the world actually runs, other than studying some sort of textbooks or model answers. Therefore, I sincerely appreciate the effort by Lime Rock Institute to cultivate the next generation. And I hope that people today here will also support Lime Rock Institute in cultivating the next generation of Hong Kong. Thank you. become the cover of Times Magazine. And uh, recently, a Hong Kong student became the... No, he's not part of the Lionel Institute. <laughs> but Hong Kong students are now known for their eloquence. And uh, I, would like to, at this, I would like to show you a video, another montage of clips that I collected. And uh, when I'm showing it to you, I would like to request all of the interns, past and now, to come up on stage now, but uh, let me show you the clips. Oh, and a lot of it will be in Cantonese too, so look after the subtitles. Come 司長和大家說 the Lion Rock Institute, in fact, respectfully suggests that we consider reducing the regulations for upstairs bars. In terms of resources, Hong Kong is severely struggling with land and space, and upstairs bars are examples of eggs in the beer restaurant economy. These bars represent Hong Kong people's ingenuity in making productive use of space. Hong Kong has placed a restriction on the number of private driving instructors out there. 
This limit is just an arbitrary number created for the vested interest of someone else. Line Rock Institute demands to open up the market now. If a driver instructor is competent, safe, and can pass the test, why should he be unable to teach that group of vehicles? Sisi三行会,一路以来,都求着要求社会各成员 你们是否想将这个方法在道由两个红颜捉到他们的家庭身上? 安全网是要够些跌了合格的人<笑> 多謝主席不过郑经学都不用再怕所以司机生学会认为我其实真的不知道司智三学会是什么我当时当日七十几个发言人当中唯一一个反对政府界的人而当日我只不过是跟政府、支持郑经汉的人说 当时连王一文主席都说郑经汉,他其实都是要钱。
uh, has, is now a repeat customer of our gala dinner. And uh, you would have noticed that we have made a special appeal to increase donations. Um, it is because this particular year, after we, a lot of us sat down and looked back, and we know that the future of Hong Kong and Hong Kong's freedom lies not in us, the present generation, but in these people, the future generation of Hong Kong's freedom. I, uh, there is one particular thing I want everyone to bring back tonight. That uh, what happens in Hong Kong is not only a problem to us. A lot of people around the world tell their own government officials, you should do this, or you should do that, because that's the way Hong Kong do it. So, Everything that we do here doesn't just affect the 7 million people that live here. What we do here actually affects nearly all 7 billion people who live on this planet. So helping the Lion Rock Institute is one way to advance their freedom. And I, I know and I hope that everyone here is a freedom lover. And if you want to advance freedom of Hong Kong, support us, support the Lion Rock Institute. Thank you. Thank you very much for all your work. Thank you, Andrew. It was a great presentation.